And good afternoon, everybody. We're here to talk about Canon's 4K crop mode. Now, a lot of you have been asking me, what is it? And I didn't even know what it was. All I knew of the effect it has of magnifying a camera and its lens. So we have got some diagrams. Now, remember that scene in Back to the Future where Doc says to Marty, forgive the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. So this is gonna represent the camera sensor and the pixels, okay? So we're gonna to get to this all in good time. So Canon's 4K crop mode is available on many DSLRs and mirrorless cameras from the R6, the R5, and mine, the R7. Now the R7 I'm finding is a powerhouse of a camera. The more I learn about it, it's actually quite unique in the range. I've had a good look around of maybe going for an upgraded Canon, but this is as good as it's gonna get for this price, especially with the crop sensor, and particularly what it does with this 4K crop mode. What the 4K crop effectively does is magnify your lens. So you're already getting a magnified lens with the crop sensor of a camera. You've got the full frame model, the crop sensor, and then you've got the crop again. Technically, when you use video specifically, this is, I should have mentioned, this is for video and not for photography, because with photos, you can crop afterwards on the computer, but with video, you can do it all in the house. So it only works with the, the video mode. So with the crop sensor, you're effectively getting the 1.6 crop factor from full frame to APS-C. And then you're getting a little bit of extra crop when you video because with the image stabilizer on, it crops out a little bit of the edges to allow for the movement. And then with the, the crop mode, you're cropping in again where the camera uses a smaller portion of the sensor. Okay, let's get into this. Now, 4K video resolution is 3840 by 2160. That's the number of pixels across and down. Gives you an eight megapixel video, 4K. And the reason for this 4K crop mode is how the processing happens when it comes to 4K. So Canon's R7 has a resolution of 6960, 6960 pixels across and 4640 pixels down. That gives you a 32.5 megapixel image when you're taking stills. So obviously there's a massive difference between eight megapixel 4K video and 32.5 megapixel photos. So let's get into these images. Okay, right. So I don't have a printer at home and this would have taken way too long to do on a PC. So let's see if we can get everyone to understand this. So this is just a rough idea of pixels on a full frame sensor. Now say your sensor is full frame and you have 32.5 megapixels. That would be 6,960 pixels across, 4,640 pixels down, okay? Obviously, I'm not gonna put 32 million dots on this paper. You know, I'd be here for several years. Right, so that's the full frame. Now, you can also have that same number of pixels on a cropped sensor, an APS-C, okay? So 6960 times 4640. Now you say to yourself, why don't all cameras just have a smaller sensor? With the pixels being further apart on a full frame sensor, there's less interference. Now, if you didn't know this, if you had a full frame camera, you could probably get away with using double the ISO sensitivity to achieve the same results as an APS-C in lower lighting conditions. That's the benefit of the larger full frame, sen full frame sensor. The benefit of the APS-C sensor is that it magnifies your lens by usually about 1.6 times. The downside being pixels are closer together, more noise. So there's a trade-off. If you can afford the more expensive, larger sensor, you get better lower light performance. APS-C sensor, you get a magnification on your telephoto lens. Great for wildlife photography, which is what I do. Now, obviously with 4K being only eight megapixels, you don't need all this sensor. So what happens is with a lot of cameras, particularly full frame, is they do what's called line skipping and pixel dropping. They will get rid of whole lines of pixels or drop them in order to bring it down to the 4K. Now, if we move to the 4K crop explanation, we still don't need all of those pixels on an APS-C sensor. So there's an efficiency and a quality when just a portion of the sensor is used like this. So no line skipping, no pixel dropping, just straight to the, the sensor, but only a small portion. So I'll explain it like this, okay? 
So say you're looking at three men with a full frame sensor and they're about that distance apart. There's the edge of the, the frame for the full frame. So you've got all of this dead space because that's the maximum you can zoom in with whatever lens. This is just an example. So that's your full frame. Now, if you moved up to APS-C, because the, the sensor is smaller and it crops the image, you get rid of a lot of the dead space from the full frame and the people fill the frame more, okay? So if you move to video mode and 4K crop, that's the difference. Now you, in this image, it's smaller because this is what I'm showing you. But you have to imagine all of these are being shown on a large television screen. So this is what you would be seeing on the screen. The people would be large, would be filling the screen. And that's the benefit of the 4K crop. A reminder that the downsides are with the crop mode on a crop body, you can't get as good low light performance and the depth of field won't be as narrow. So why does it exist? Well, downsampling from a larger sensor takes up lots of processing power and apparently it does cause problems like more and aliasing, get those words correct. One trade-off that's mentioned is that a wide field of view will be narrowed, but who would be using that on a wide angle lens? Most people that would be using this mode are going to be wildlife photographers. You're probably asking why doesn't everybody use the APS-C size cropped body sensors? Well, like I said, a lot of professional photographers prefer lower light performance and a really narrow depth of field. It can really make images stand out away from their background and foreground. If you don't need that, the benefits are there. It costs much less to make the APS-C sensors simply down to they make more of them. That reduces the cost. Full frame sensors require more silicon that costs more money and there's, there cannot be any mistakes, the slightest little error in the construction of the, the full frame sensor and it has to be binned. With the smaller APS-C sensors, there's less chance of errors. You, you will still get an error and it will have to be binned if there's a mistake making, but obviously with a smaller area, there's less chance of that happening. And the equipment to do that costs more on the full frame sensors. And because of that effect of the lower price of the APS-C in terms of materials, it just means that further down the line, more people are gonna buy the APS-C. So eventually it will just drop faster in price than the full frame sensor cameras. Each full frame sensor requires more calibration, more man hours put in to make sure that all the vignetting and everything is done right up to the edges. Just takes more time, more labor costs. So let's just have a quick sum up. Full frame sensors have to line skip and pixel drop and down sample, which takes a lot of processing power, a lot of wasted energy. APS-C, still the same number of pixels, you'll still have to line drop but because it's smaller, there's less processing power needed. And then just using the pixels you need cropped in on a 4K crop requires less processing power and causes you to have a greater magnification and a sharper image. Now, you, I've come to this question then, why don't I just use the 4K crop all the time, for, even for normal filming, especially if it's not too close? Well, I've messed around with it and the image stabilizer when handheld seems to interfere more than it does when it's not in the 4K crop mode. So I'm gonna to have to have an experiment with this. Maybe it only really works when it's on a tripod, but handheld, it doesn't, I've noticed it kind of like bouncing and floating around more than it does when it's just in the standard APS-C mode and non-cropped. So I'll just, if I bring this up in another video in the future and I was like, yeah, don't ever use it. So for now, I, I hope you understand that full frame to APS-C to cropped APS-C gives you the 4K crop. And on the Canon R7, so you've got one-to-one -one for a full frame, 1.6 crop factor on an APS-C. And then it, apparently on the R7, only on the R7, which is great, it's my camera, all the way up to 2.9. Let's give you some examples I filmed in the last few months. I've kept them saved up on, in files. One of them was a Kestrel when I was at Jeskins. So what I'll show you is starting at 200 mil all the way up to 800 mil, and then in 4K crop, what the difference is. Okay, so here's 200 millimeters, 300 millimeters, 400 millimeters, 500 millimeters, 600 millimeters, 
800 millimeters and 800 millimeters 4K crop. Okay, one more. These are a couple of crows when I was over at Avery Hill. 200 millimeters, 300 millimeters, 400 millimeters, 500 millimeters, 600 millimeters, 800 millimeters, and 800 millimeters 4K crop. And then obviously video and photo perform differently. So what I'll show you, this is from yesterday when I went to Greenwich Park. Here's a Eurasian J. This is the closest I could get at 800 millimeters in photo mode. So this is the resolution you'll get in the photo mode. Now to show you how much closer I can get with 4K crop in video, apparently this is 2.9 times. I'm sh I think that's right. <laughs> so here it is. Yeah, I'd say that looks like about th almost three times the magnification. So you can't get it with photos as there's no point because you can crop in and with the computer afterwards. But when it's all in body, 4K crop mode is the way to go for extra magnification. So that's amazing. I think back to when I first got into bird photography and I started with a full frame camera and a 400 millimeter lens. And now I'm effectively working with almost 3000 millimeters with video. Insanity.